What a journey! It's extremely difficult, but at the same time fascinating to create something that is so simple, inexpensive and easy to produce, and at the same time easy to use for everyone, except of course for little children. In Europe, approximately 80% of all tablets and capsules entering the market are first packaged in a blister strip and then in a retail carton. In the US, it's the other way around. Until today, approximately 80% of all medicines are packed in bottles. This is however changing rapidly, because also in America the trend toward the increasing use of blisters is a fact, which is for a very good reason. A blister warrants the integrity of tablets and capsules much better than a bottle. Production batch numbers and expiry date are stamped or printed on each blister. A blister protects the individual dose against moisture and contamination and unlike a bottle, a blister shows clearly if a product has been tampered with. It's a proven fact that cartons are not only the best but also the most economical way to package blisters with tablets and capsules. But until now, the only option to package blisters in the child resistant way is by using all kinds of specialty packaging available in the market. For that reason, we've started the development of lock for kids cartons in 2013. Since the start of the development, we've executed many pretests and at first we struggled hard to get positive results. It's really hard to beat the mind and physical capabilities of so many different young children with something as simple as a carton. But with every negative test, we got a lot of feedback on the behavior of both children as well as adults and seniors, and we've used this learning curve to improve the original design. Mid-2014, we've managed to get certification on three different sizes of cartons, and with that we got a range certificate, meaning that all cartons between the smallest and the largest tested carton could be mass-produced, without the need for recertification. From that point onwards, we decided to introduce the world's first true child-resistant carton, lock for kids to the market. The industry received the packaging very well and in no time lock for kids got recognition by winning very ambitious awards such as the CPHI Pharma Award, Silver in the Dutch Gouden Note and the WPO World Star Presidents Award. All great successes, but from a user's point of view we were still not 100% happy with our lock for kids carton. The majority of senior people had no problems opening the carton. And looking purely at the test results, both the child resistant and senior friendliness tests all fall well within the US and international standards. Nevertheless, we noticed that a small percentage of people struggled really hard to open the carton. Our packaging design team did not feel comfortable with that, and a new goal was set. The development of Lock for Kids 2.0. The target was set to make the carton easy to open by everyone except of course young children. And professionals that deal with child resistant packaging know very well that finding the thin line between true senior friendliness and at the same time passing the testing protocols with young children is about the toughest packaging design job anyone can imagine. But we've managed to do so with great success. For those amongst you who are interested, let me now explain what we have done to design the world's first true child resistant carton. First, we developed what we internally refer to as Lock for Kids 1.0. I will spare you the details of all the things we've tried that didn't work in the early stage of testing. Instead, I will share with you some key design elements of the certified Lock for Kids 1.0 version that we've introduced in 2014. The carton has two small openings which are located on the side walls, diagonally across at a distance that is hard to cover by little children's fingers but easy for adults. A plastic tray slides into the carton and two hooks lock the tray every time when it's fully inserted. By pressing the hooks simultaneously, the tray unlocks and can be pulled out. The cardboard is laminated with a strength film to provide tear resistance to the carton. This is necessary to withstand the gentle touch of some of the youngsters. The front wall of the tray is curved to withstand the strong pulling force of little children's fingers. The front flange of the tray has a downward angle which gives the user a good grip for pulling it out when the tray is fully inserted into the carton. Also this downward banded flange avoids interference with the dust flap of the carton when tucking in. 
Two small hooks connected to the tray are shaped like fishing hooks. This fishing hook design ensures that when the tray is pulled, the hooks block and cannot be pressed. Reason to make the design like this is to prevent the hooks to be pressed one by one, which would cause certain failure in the testing. In 1.0, both hooks have to be pressed simultaneously, before the tray can be pulled. To make sure that users understand the sequence, pictogram instructions are printed onto the carton. To qualify as immediate packaging, as per US regulations, all components, tray, carton and blisters have to be designed in such a way that the parts stay connected when the packaging is opened by the consumer. So all these things combined are what we internally refer to as Lock4Kids 1.0. Now with Lock4Kids 2.0 we had one goal only, and that was to make the packaging as easy as possible to open for everybody. Except of course for... So what did we do? In Lock4Kids 1.0 Two small apertures are located diagonally across on the edge between the top and side wall of the carton. We observed some people struggling to get our fingers in these small apertures, so for version 2.0 we decided to change the shape and the size. We have made the holes larger, ensuring easier access, even for big fingers. Also we have added two small cuts in the side wall, directly connected to the apertures, in order to make the carton wall much more flexible in the push point area. Together, these changes give a very pleasant and easy user experience. So, in the development of Lock4Kids 2.0, taking the sequence of pushing and pulling out was the biggest challenge. I'm happy that I can now share with you that we've successfully managed to change the two hooks in such a way that the sequence of pressing the hooks first and then pulling the tray out has become irrelevant. This is an extremely important improvement, because Lock4Kids has been developed to be used by everyone, preferably without any explanation of pictogram, and it should work well for everyone, except of course for little children. And while keeping equally good test results with the children, Lock4Kids 2.0 passed the senior testing with a 100% score, without any opening instruction on the carton.